and Guru. Gracious link to God. Dostadashi has been overwhelmed by devotion, his heart overflowing with emotions, and remembering his beloved Hanumanji. He is on the concluding leg of the Chalisa, with tearful eyes as if he is waiting to embrace Hanumanji, keeps saying, Hell, 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 with the same impatience as that of a river rushing to merge with the ocean. For a devotee, such a moment is not only very pleasant, but emotionally unbearable too. It is a state of overjoy associated with intense desire to merge with the Lord. Also, it is unbearable because the devotee finds it impossible to wait any longer. He keeps pleading to his Lord. Oh my Lord, please grace me, embrace me, and merge me in you as I am unable to bear my existence separated from you. Accept me, O Lord. J, J, J. Repetition of the word J held three times has several interpretations. First, may you be victorious in all three times, past, present, and future. Two, may you be victorious in all three lok worlds, Bhu, the earth, Bhuva, space, and Swara, the heavens. Three, Lord Vishnu, incarnated as Varman, delivered the king Bali in three steps. Please liberate me in three steps from Lokashena, Vitashena, Purusheva, craving from fame, wealth, and progeny, respectively. Fourth, may my mind, speech, and deeds become pure in your devotion. Fifth, may you take me beyond these three attributes, Sattva, Raja, and Tamas, namely purity, passion, and inertia. A curious uh, reader may refer to chapter 14 of the Bhagavad Gita for detailed explanation on these three attributes, Guna. Six, may you bless me with the right combination of gnan, wisdom, karma, action, and bhakti devotion. Gosai. Gosai is derived from the original Sanskrit word Goswami. Go plus Swami equals Goswami. Swami means Lord. Goswami is Lord of Go. The word Go has several meanings in Sanskrit. First is cow, hence Goswami is a protector of cows. Two, sense organs. As discussed in Chapai 3 and 31, Hanumanji being in full control of all sense organs is Gosai. Third, speech. One having control over his speech. In Chapai 7, we have elaborated this attitude of Hanumanji in great detail. Fourth, earth. Hanumanji is a protector of the earth from the sinful activity of demons. Gupa karo guru deva kinai. Dusudashi requests Hanumanji to bestow his grace in the capacity of a guru. As a guru, Hanumanji steers a devotee to reach the supreme. Also, Hanumanji helps one attain a guru. In the initial phase of a spiritual journey, a seeker needs constant guidance. Hanumanji's grace can be felt when a seeker meets an enlightened soul in a form of a friend, philosopher and guide. One of the tragedies of modern society is that though there is no depth of wealth, power, facilities, there is a vacuum of right guidance of to put these creative use. In the absence of such a guiding force, all the resources remain underutilized and at all times their misuse leads to the individual's downfall. As a person becomes resourceful, a coach with ultra motives gathers around and insulates him from positive ideas. This calls for a mentor having clear vision and a courage to say the truth. Hence is a need for a guru. To be blessed by a guru at a young age is a great accomplishment. Life is a journey into the unknown where one needs to take decisions at every step. One incorrect decision may deflect life in a wrong direction, resulting in a wastage to 5 to 10 years. Later one feels that proper guidance at the appropriate stage would have helped to keep one on the right path, and life would have been more meaningful. Saint Kabir says, Yatan Vishke Beldi Guru Amrut Khan sis the body is a poisonous vine and a guru is an inexhaustible source of nectar. It is therefore a cheap deal if you get a guru even by offering your head. Even if you surrendered everything, including your ego, to please a guru, it is a bargain. Guru can not only create wonders in your life, but can also put you in direct contact with the Supreme. Jobat durva na so sake, wobat duha so hoti hai. Kabil guru jab milta hai, tobat kuda se hota hai. That which cannot be cured by medicine is cured by prayers. When a capable guru is found, then one can communicate with the Supreme. An enlightened guru becomes a bridge between an individual soul and the Supreme. Holding your hand in his one hand, he leads you onto the spiritual path, while his other hand touches the Supreme. At an appropriate stage, the guru quietly walks away from the middle, putting your hand in the hands of God. You are then in unison with God. A true guru does not tie a pupil to him, but keeps him attached with the Supreme. Two incidents from the Ramayana will reveal the importance of this Jopai. Hanumanji as a character enters the flow of the Ramayana in the beginning of the Kishkindakant. Sri Ram and Lakshman, searching for Sita in the forest, reach Mount Rushyamuk. Sugriv, having spotted them, deputes Hanumanji to find the identity. Hanumanji goes there in the guise of a Brahmin. We are referred to this first meeting between Hanumanji and Sri Ram in Chopai 7. Sri Ram, introducing himself and Lakshman, asks Hanumanji about his story. We have narrated our account explaining your story, O Brahmin. Sri Ram asks Hanumanji about his identity. 
At that moment, Hanumanji, instead of telling about himself, described Sugriv's agony and befriended him with Sri Ram. Thus, Hanumanji relieved Sugriv of Vali's fear and reinstated him as king of Kishkinda. Later on, when Hanumanji meets Vibhishan in Lanka, the latter asks about his identity. Gari Pranam Punchi Kusali, Vipra Kaluhu Nichkata Bujani. Bowing to him, he inquired about his well-being, explaining your story, O Brahmin. Observe the similar words in the second half of the stanza in both the instances. When Vibhishan asked Hanumanji about his identity, he perceived the agony of Vibhishan and instead of narrating his own story, he told him about Sri Ram. Hanumanji brought Vibhishan to Sri Ram's refuge and finally crowned Vibhishan as king of Lanka. This portrays Hanumanji's humility and greatness. When God asks Hanumanji about his story, Hanumanji narrates the devotee's agony, and when Vibhishan, a devotee, asks about his own story, he narrates the story of the Lord. Hanumanji removes the devotee's agony by taking it to the Lord. On the other hand, he tells the story of the Lord to the devotee to make him realize God. Hanumanji never talks about himself in any manner. He just acts as a mediator between a devotee and God. This is the quality of a true guru. For a disciple, such a true guru is no different from God personified. In this context, the present Chapa is interpreted in two ways. Properly, it is read as Krupa Karo Guru Dev Kinai. O Hanuman, grace me like a divine guru. It can also be read as Krupa Karo Guru Dev Kinai. O Hanuman, O Guru, grace me like God. <coughs> the same reverence is expressed in an extremely famous verse to praise a guru. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarai, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmeshi, Guru Venama. Guru is Brahma, the creator. Guru is Vishnu, the sustainer. And Guru is Shiva, the annihilator. Guru is the supreme personified. I bow down to such a guru. As Brahma, Guru creates a spiritual quest in the mind of the disciple. As Vishnu, Guru supports the journey towards spirituality. As Shiva, Guru dispels all the delusions from the disciple's mind. Thus being the supreme Brahman, Guru liberates the seeker. In Doha 1, we began the study of the Hanuman Chalice by expressing our reverence to the Guru. In the conclusion 2, we are very humbly hail our Guru. This is a system of Sanskrit scriptures where Upkaram, beginning and Upasamhar, conclusion, are the same note. Hanuman Chalice follows the same system and hence it's regarding as a Shastra, an authentic scripture. Chapai 38